Good afternoon and uh, welcome to today's press briefing. Um, last Wednesday, the 28th of September, President Robinson issued his decision not to grant early release to Shevchet Kabashi on the grounds that the seriousness of Kabashi's contempt warranted a denial of his application. In reaching his decision, the President noted the trial chamber's finding that Kabashi's actions had deprived the trial chamber in the Haradinei et al. trial of evidence relevant for an effective ascertainment of truth and at the adjudication in that case. The President concluded that these actions had posed a threat to the effective functioning of the tribunal. On the 16th of September 2011, Kabashi was sentenced to two months imprisonment for contempt of the tribunal for refusing or failing to answer questions as a witness in the case of Ramush Haradine and others on two occasions in June and November 2007. Last Thursday, the 29th of September, the trial chamber rejected Voislav Sheshel's request to discontinue proceedings in his case, finding that the accused had not established that his right to a trial within a reasonable time had been violated. In its decision, the chamber referred to its earlier decision of the 10th of February 2010, which set out that according to international and European jurisprudence, there is no predetermined threshold with regard to the time period beyond which a trial may be considered unfair on account of undue delay. The Chamber also found that the accused had failed to provide concrete proof of abuse of process besides the fact that his trial is still ongoing. According to the Chamber, Sheshel's comparison of the length of his detention to that of other accused in other national and international jurisdictions was not relevant. In this regard, the Chamber noted that some trials, including at the ICTR, have far exceeded the length of that of the accused. Finally, the Chamber noted that since its decision of 10 February 2010, proceedings have not been delayed nor suspended and Sheshel has not requested to be provisionally released. The trial of Jelena Rasic, a former member of the Milan Lukic's defense team, charged with five counts of contempt of court, has been scheduled to start on Monday, the 9th of January, 2012. The indictment against Rasic alleges that in October 2008, Rasic knowingly and willingly interfered with the tribunal's administration of justice in that she procured a false witness statement from Zuhtia Tabakovic. It is further alleged that Rasic presented Tabakovic with two other pre-written statements asking him to find other persons to sign false statements and to testify in Mina Lukic's trial in return for a payment of 1,000 euros. The indictment against Rasic was filed confidentially on the 9th of July 2010 and made public on the 22nd of September 2010. Rasic was transferred to the seat of the tribunal on the 20th of September 2010. At her initial appearance on the 22nd of September 2010, she pleaded not guilty to all five counts of contempt. Rasic was granted provisional release on the 12th of November 2010, pending the start of the trial. I will now turn to some activities in the courtrooms. In the trial of Radovan Karadzic, the Chamber is currently hearing the testimony of witness Asim Egrelic, former president of the executive board of the SDA party in Kluč municipality. This trial continues this week and next week as scheduled. In the trial of Jovica Stanisic and Franko Simatovic, the chamber is currently hearing the testimony of defense witness Radenko Novakovic, former Serbian state security officer. This trial also continues this week and next week as scheduled. A status conference in the appeals case of Vujadin Popovic and others, scheduled to take place yesterday, has been <coughs> postponed until Wednesday the 19th of October at 10 o'clock in the morning at a location to be confirmed. A status conference will be held in the case of Ratko Mladic this Thursday the 6th of October at 2.30 p.m. in courtroom 3. The trial of Micho Stanisic and Stoyan Zhuplanin is currently adjourned and will resume this Friday, the 7th of October, at 9 o'clock in the morning in courtroom 3. Finally, 
a reminder that the trial of Haradinai and others had adjourned and will reconvene on Wednesday the 26th of October at 9 o'clock in the morning in courtroom 1. Um, I will conclude with an update on the Tribunal's outreach activities. Today the Tribunal welcomes a group of six judges and five prosecutors from Kosovo for a two-day study visit as part of the Tribunal's ongoing effort to strengthen the cooperation and knowledge sharing with members of the judiciary in the former Yugoslavia. The visiting judges and prosecutors will hold peer-to-peer -peer discussions with the Tribunal's judges on a number of topics, including witness protection, judgment drafting, challenges in adjudicating war crimes, procedural tools to expedite war crimes proceedings, and access to ICTY evidence and legal material. They will also meet with representatives of the Office of the Prosecutor. The visit has been organized as part of the EU-funded War Crimes Justice Project uh, implemented in partnership with OSCE um, ODR. That's it from me. No statement from the Office of the Prosecutor. Okay. So, are there any questions? Yes, one yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, it is written in Serbian media that uh, so Serbia was sent a few doctors here to examine uh, some of the Serbian accused. Can you comment mm -hmm. on that? Uh, yeah, um, thank you for the question. The, um, we have been notified indeed that uh, um, some five detainees uh, have sought cooperation from the Serbian authorities to uh, um, be examined by doctors of their choice in the United Nations Detention Unit. Um, by way of clarification, um, as you probably know, the, um, each detainee at the UNDU is entitled to be examined by a doctor of his choice. Um, the medical care for all our detainees is um, held by the medical officer. So med the medical officer of the, the tribunal is in charge of um, ensuring the health of the accused, but at the same time every detainee is entitled to be examined by a doctor of their choice. So in that context such a visit theoretically could take place. To date we have not received a request from the detainees uh, in question, uh, even though I understand from some preliminary discussions with uh, um, some Serbian officials that uh, a similar request may have been made to the Serbian authorities. In order for such a visit to take place, uh, of course, um, the, the detainees will have to file an individual request uh, with the detention unit commanding officer. And uh, if the request is granted, of course, um, such a visit could take place. This gives me an opportunity to, to clarify one issue because indeed there has been some speculation in the media. Um, it, it needs to be very clear that an outside doctor can visit with the detainees and can examine the detainees but cannot prescribe treatment uh, because, uh, as I said, under the rules of detention, the medical officer of the detention unit is the only one who is responsible for the health of, uh, of the detainees and as such, if such a visit is to take place, uh, those doctors will be um, able to, to meet with the accused, to examine them, to discuss with the medical officer their health status and to also have access to their medical file, but they will not uh, be able to prescribe any, any treatment um, and uh, that, that's, uh, I think, an important point to be made so that everyone is clear on it. Um, I think that's all that I can say about it.